channel. Now this is quite a nice piece of laburnum. Quite often when you get uh, naturally dried pieces like this, you've got a lot of cracks in it. But uh, from what I can see, unless I've trimmed it before uh, advertising it, there's no cracking in it at all, which is nice. Uh, now the bark is fairly loose, so that will all come off during the course of the turning. But I'm thinking about making a vase of it. Now, the problem we've got is the top, this is obviously gonna be the end, the open end of the vase, is quite narrow here with these two uh, pith areas. And that could give us uh, a little bit of problem when it comes to the design. Uh, if you look at it that way, imagine that being the bottom, and obviously flute out to the top, but this area at the top, with it being narrower than the rest, it's gonna have like almost wings on this side and be open up down here, which may be okay. If I taper that in quite a lot, then I can kind of make a feature of that, I think. So anyway, that's what we're gonna try. First of all, initially, we're gonna mount it between centers this way, uh, turn a tenon on this end, turn it round and then start shaping. I may do a bit of shaping while it's in this orientation to get the balance right, but we'll see once we've got it mounted. So first of all, I'll just grab a hammer and a drive spur. I'll get started. I'm trying to get this as central as possible. Without not being flat, I may have to use this little fella. There's a better chance of holding it. Okay, we're between centers. I haven't tightened anything up yet. So I just want to make sure we're not wasting wood by having it too offset. I've got a bit of a lump this side, which is throwing off the calculations a little bit. But I think that looks to be okay. All right, so we'll tighten this down. All right, we'll sharpen up. We shall get started. Okay, we're all ready to start. I'm going to start off with a, a one inch spindle gouge from Record Power. I'm just going to try and take off a lot of material around here just to get this round so I can see the state of the wood underneath. I've got a few areas around here which lead me to believe there could be a bit of a problem, but I don't think it's going to be too bad. Anyway, let's get started. I do like spindle turning because you can get the speed up relatively quickly. Uh, currently, with I think we're turning at about 900, 950 RPM, and it won't be long before we can get a little bit higher than that as well. I think I'm just going to try and get rid of this big lump here as well, so we can start looking at seeing what kind of style or what kind of shapes going to emerge when we turn this around. the sap on that side. That's okay. Right, next step, I'm going to make a, a tenon on this side. I'm going to be using my larger 100mm jaws. So uh, I'll just mark up for that. Right, I made a slight mistake. We haven't got a completely flat bottom here. Uh, so I'm going to flatten it off first, then I'm going to redraw the line. Okay, 
Let's get this turned around. Okay. Turned it around. Now, there's a bit of the wood underneath here which does seem a little bit softer or worm damaged or, or something. So, starting off, I think, I'll get the bowl gouge out and start working in this kind of direction to try and clear this area and see what we're left with. I don't want to make any decisions yet on the style of vase we're making. We've got a basic idea, but any kind of fine tuning I don't want to make yet until I know what the wood is like around here. particular design is screaming out to me yet, unfortunately. It's the narrowness of this top, which is uh, kind of throwing me a little bit. Okay, I've had a good, good chance to look at it. I've taken the bark off and I nearly have a plan of attack. I'm going to take down this wide opening to just outside of where these two eyes are and then narrow down a lot more than it is now. I might go out at the bottom. I think that's the only shape that'll work. Yeah, like a long stem vase, something like that. With a nice little flute at the top. I desperately want to get rid of the uh, the heart, the uh, the sapwood, because it's nowhere near as beautiful as the heartwood, and that's the main feature of the burner. That's what makes it so beautiful. Right, let's get this turned down a little bit and then start creating a shape. This is still the very early stages. I'm unlikely to change my mind a couple more times yet, but this is what's going through my head at the moment. break there and just stood back from it just to have a look at it and try and get a few ideas uh, now I like in this angle coming in I think it needs to be a little bit steeper into a narrow neck and then out into a bulbous bottom probably ending around there I think that may look quite different or is that too different if I'm keeping a bulbous bit here, then I can always change my mind later on because I still have material to work on. So I'm going to come in, take this curve in here a little bit, and then feather that down to about there, I think. It's going to be a strange one. I didn't do what I said I was going to do, but I'm just trying to get a, a liking for this curve at the top before I start worrying about the rest. Now what I'm thinking is if I start, when I start hollowing this out, if I take this curve quite steep from these two edges here, then when I'm hollowing in, it'll be hopefully take out, take away these areas, just leaving these two kind of wings out at the top. I think that might look quite unusual. I'm just trying to imagine that shape and getting a neck that balances it and then I can worry about the rest. But I don't want to do this and then have to start trying to fit the top into it. And I can't hollow out yet because, well could I? I guess I could hollow out. 
Let me have a think. No, I'm going to do the the body first, and a bit the neck. Do a bit of sapwood to get rid of. So we have to bring these wings in a little bit. I don't want them too wide, otherwise it's going to not look balanced. Right. Another couple of passes on this body. Get rid of this sapwood. got a bit of sapwood left but that's nearly gone. Once I've got this shape nice I'll do a bit of refining on the neck and then we're going to start sanding. Oh dear. Yeah, we've got a bit of worm damage there which isn't very nice. I knew something was going on somewhere. That's all ready, that's all good. I'll uh, set up for sanding, I'll let you watch a bit of it, but I shall bring you back at the end. Okay, sanding went well. I've just had my air scrubber on because uh, one thing you need to know about laburnum is that it is poisonous so always take extra precautions when you're using it or when you're turning it and don't uh, use it for any food products wow <laughs> this is just uh, isopropyl alcohol i'm just rubbing on just to clean out the grooves before i go on with a, an abrasive paste it's giving an indication of how gorgeous this wood is going to be once it's got a finish on it. Right, I'm just let that evaporate and I'll come back on. I think we'll put a sealer on it and then, uh, then we'll go on with an abrasive paste. Okay, I'm going to go on with a, a shellac sealer and then we'll let that dry and then put on an abrasive paste. It probably looks quite light at the moment, but laburnum will go darker over time and take on a beautiful brown colour. Really quite dark. Okay, right, we'll let this sit in for a little while. Then I'll come back, we'll cut it back with an abrasive paste and then we'll put a few coats to finish on it. While that's waiting to dry, I'm going to quickly go and take the dogs out for a walk. Okay, this has had plenty of time to sit and dry. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, uh, during the sanding I lost a little piece of this top, so I had to just uh, reshape uh, the end here. So, 
these things happen, but hopefully it still looks all right. In fact, I think it looks a little bit better. Right, so we're gonna get on some uh, abrasive paste. I'm using the True Grit as usual. Abrasive paste is basically designed to bring uh, a normal finish on sandpaper up to a higher grit. So for instance, this was, uh, I've sanded this up to about 400 and the application of uh, abrasive paste should give us a finish of a, around about a thousand grit. I'll start rubbing this in, start off at a slow speed and then increase it. We remove the excess grit with a bit of isopropyl alcohol. You can use denatured alcohol or anything else like that as long as it's a, a fluid that evaporates quickly. Just let that evaporate. Okay, I want to go over the top with shellac. I give this two or three coats. I give each one uh, a chance to dry, and then I'll uh, just give it a light wire wool over the top. We'll build up a few coats, and we should be able to get a nice high shine on this. Okay, well I'll get on with this. I shall bring you back in a second when we're starting to hollow out. Okay, we're all ready to start hollowing out. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just flatten off this area here before I start going in with the force in a bit. Uh, we're going to try and go down quite a long way on this one, or as far as I can with the tools I've got. Now I've never really had much of an opportunity in the past to go as deep as I'm going to go with this one because I haven't had a steady rest. Now a steady rest is designed to hold, uh, to stop this moving and coming out the chuck when you are when you've got really deep projects to hollow out. Uh, this one I got from a guy called Tim Mason who makes them bespoke uh, for the lathe that you're using. So I sent him my measurements and he made this up for me and it's been absolutely brilliant. Uh, I'll, put a, uh, I'll put his email link in the description below if you're wanting something like this for your lathe. Should be enough to get us started. Now those kind of cuts on here would be well, quite often disastrous if you were trying to do it with a, a steady rest. So sorry, without a steady rest. So right, I'll get some forced a bits. Good enough for now. As you can see, we've got a lot of moisture building up in this piece, so there's obviously still a bit in the center. So I'm just going to let this cool a little bit and then we'll start feathering in these edges. Okay, we're all ready to start creating the, the opening in on this. I'm going to follow this curve to the neck and then blend it into the hole we've got, we've made. So it's kind of seamless. We're doing this very carefully, very slowly. Okay, 
good. Right, I'm just going to angle this to rest more in, make sure it doesn't catch, just so I can keep the tool closer to the wall to help cut down vibrations. I shall set up for sanding. I'll let you watch a bit of it. It isn't going to take long. I ain't going to sand all the way to the bottom there. If your fingers can't get to it, then don't sand it. Right. Sanding was good. I'm just going to quickly clean what I can reach with isopropyl and then we'll put a, a shellac over the top. I'm going to use a, a paintbrush to get the shellac down inside this hole so it still looks like it's got a finish on it. Just let that evaporate. Okay, I'm going to go in with the shellac sealer. as well use that. Okay, I'm going to wipe down any excess and then we'll let that dry. Okay that's good enough to dry. Now I'm not going to go on with an, an abrasive paste because of the shape of the lid it's not going to be it's not going to do me an awful lot of good but I am going to use a, a 2000 grit like scotch pad on the end of my drill just to quickly go over the surface and then we'll put a sealer on, uh, put a shellac on. Like I'm going to apply in the same way with a brush so I can get a good coating on the inside. I'm going to put two or three coats of this shellac on the outside and the rim and then we can part this off, sand the base and we're done. Right, I'll bring you back for the parting off. Okay, I've taken this steady rest away. Uh, I've just replaced it with a tennis ball in the end, just again to stop the, the sideward movement. Uh, we're going in with the uh, parting tool, normal parting tool, and we'll be coming in here and cutting through. We're gonna go, not going to cut all the way through, we're going to get it as near as we can within safety reasons and then finish it off with a handsaw. I'll do a little bit of sanding and finish up the base and I'll bring it back in a second and we'll take a look at what we've done. beautiful 12 inch laburnum vase. Now this one really gave me a few problems because the top of the piece was so narrow compared to the rest of the body. It, I had a lot of problems trying to find uh, a design that I was happy with and we had to keep on chipping away at it until this came out and I'm really pleased it did because I really do quite like it. it in that kind of aspect there you know, it's quite feminine. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that anymore but uh, that's how it looks to me anyway. 
Uh, laburnum is always an amazing wood. You always get these absolutely parts of just immense, beautiful grain. That is just a joy to look at. Uh, the abrasive paste did a great job. This is absolutely silky smooth. And I'm really, really, really happy with the way this one came out. Even on the inside of the lip, the grain is just absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this one, and I hope you have, then uh, I would really appreciate a like and subscribe. And if you could share the video as well, then that would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, if you do leave a comment as well, then you are going to be entered into the giveaway, which I am currently thinking is going to be when we get to 25,000 subscribers. When I'm doing this, we're currently at about 22 and a half. So another two and a half thousand subscribers. Now, I mentioned last week that I was listing a few items on eBay and they've now sold, but I have listed two more items. I've listed, uh, maybe if some of you are surprised to see this, uh, this is the grass tree root bowl that we made a few months ago. And this has been my most popular video to date. Uh, last time I looked, it was starting to approach 900,000 views. And uh, I owe a great debt of debt, uh, gratitude to this piece, but uh, it is going up for sale. Second piece I'm listing as well is the third piece I ever made for the channel. Uh, quite a stark contrast to the grass tree root, but this is a beautifully figured ash bowl with a resin inlay, pretty much made in my favorite style. So anyway, I'll put a listings in the description below if you want to bid on these. Uh, but apart from that, thank you so much indeed for watching. And I'll see you again soon. Thank you.